this piece over here is supposed to be 150 millimeters let's see how accurate the edm process is that's bang on i don't know what's the definition of perfection in your dictionary but that's perfect to me hello everyone allow me to briefly introduce myself and what i am trying to do my name is Mohammed Azugal Javed and I am curiously a materials engineer that went from creating things on 3D printers to actually making the printers themselves. In regards to what I am trying to do, it's simple. The printer has to be fast. Really, really, really fast. I am aiming of printing at speeds north of a thousand millimeters per second. And I'm not talking about printing one off print that shows that it could. I'm after regularly printing at those speeds. It has to be extremely reliable. What is the point of having a fast printer if it can't be reliable? This printer has to be reliable at high speeds and that means keeping a good consistent quality and accuracy. That's it. These are all the goals. Now that we're on the same page, let's begin making our print. Okay, here we are in the Fusion 360 workspace. As you can see, currently only the base frame is visible. The base frame comes from an Ender 5 Plus and to that I have done no modification at all. The only modification I have done is the addition of this extension. This extension allows me the addition of a top hat and a backpack. The top head would allow me the addition of a much taller tool head while providing me enough space for my AC servers. They will come at some place around here and the backpack would uh, uh, provide me with enough space for a electronics chamber keeping my electronics safe from the heat generated within the print chamber. The only design issue I had while doing this was that the Ender 5 Plus frame is extremely space constrained to the point that the only way to fixture the extrusions would be from outside. Speaking of fixtures, these fixtures will be made on laser cutting. And speaking of laser cutting, I have an idea. I have a laser myself. Why not try cutting these? Okay, here's the laser I was talking about. Let's try cutting this piece of steel with it. I think we're going to need a much, much bigger laser. Which brings us over to the folks at Micro CNC. Here's my sheet metal stock. My sheet metal stock includes 2 mm and 3 mm stainless steel and 4 mm aluminum. The 2 mm stainless steel will be used for smaller bits which require little uh, strength and 3.5 mm stainless steel parts will be required for beefier components while the 4 mm aluminium will be used for motion components. The laser being used is a 1.5 kilowatt unit. I obviously went for the quality option so they are using nitrogen to cut the sheet metal parts but nitrogen has a lower power capacity as compared to oxygen this is why you will see that the laser is struggling to cut these parts but anyhow we got through it and the parts looked sublime while i was there i saw that they had wire edm machines this gave me an idea maybe i should get my frame cut by wire edm this would definitely be a first and the results would be worth the experiments. So I said, why not?
with all the parts received from the workshop i have to say there was a lot of prep work involved so rather than boring you guys with all that and then assembling the frame what i did is create this stop motion video i hope you enjoy it because it took a lot of effort to make Well, the frame is now done. Time for the big question. Do I recommend the EDM process to all of you? Well, if you're after accuracy, then a hundred times over, yes. But, and this is a big but. You know what? Let me show this to you a bit closer. Come here. Okay, so here's the problem. You see these dark spots, that's rust. But many of you will say, that's poppy dog. Aluminium doesn't rust. And you would be right in saying that. Aluminium does not rust under normal conditions. But once aluminium is introduced to soils, it will rust. So here's my theory about what happened. This is a theory. It can be wrong. And I would not get mad if you prove me wrong. The theory is when the ADM process began, it chipped off some of the anodizing agent that was on top of these extrusions. That anodizing agent contained some form of oxidants which further reacted with other anodizing agents and the reaction became self-sustaining. Or another theory that I have that the deionized water that was used for cutting these extrusions was not fully deionized. Other than that, nothing makes sense. I would love to hear your thoughts about it. I guess it boils down to personal preference. Personally, for me, it doesn't matter because the entire frame will be covered with panels. But if you're someone who prefers aesthetics above everything, I would not recommend this to you. And why should I? Because of this segue to our sponsor, Step, who now offer custom frames. Their services include cutting, drilling, and tapping. All you need to do is send them your specifications and they will make it for you and then ship it to you. No hassle and excellent accuracy. The best of both worlds. For more information, check the link in the description of this video. Support the people who support us. Thank you. Until next time. Bye.